We are 17 days away from what could be the most consequential midterm elections in modern history. I'm standing at one of the in one of the states with the most at stake for its own citizens and for the rest of the country. I'm bringing you a special edition of Velshi Across America 2022 from Detroit, Michigan this weekend. Here in Michigan, the governor, the attorney general and the secretary of state are all in re-election battles against challengers who have embraced election fraud conspiracies. An abortion is literally on the ballot here. Michiganders will have the option to vote on something called Proposal 3, the Right to Reproductive Freedom Initiative, which would essentially protect abortion access in the state. Now, to learn more about how the election is playing out on the ground in this crucial state, I traveled to the Henry Ford Museum of American Innovation in the city of Dearborn, right outside Detroit. There I was joined by six voters from across the political spectrum who eat, sleep, and breathe Michigan. It was a powerful and important conversation. Here's some of what they had to say. I think that the biggest thing that anyone can think of is Michigan is often sort of a barometer or what would you say, the, the canary in the coal mine on national issues. And listening to Michiganders is as close as you can get in a lot of ways to listening to the voice of most Americans. We have a really unique opportunity to sort of present ourselves to the country as a swing state and as a group of people, a population that are really engaged and really diverse. And I think that, you know, the more we listen to Michigan, the better informed we'll be about national politics. Well, Lily, you spend your time in, in a couple of states. So what Lily was saying is kind of interesting. What do you sort of see in Michigan as it relates to the rest of the country when it comes to these elections? Well, one of the things that, that I always want people to remember is that uh, how Detroit goes is how the state goes and how the rest of the uh, process moves. And oftentimes, unfortunately, people forget that in the metro Detroit era, area, it is predominantly black area. African Americans have uh, gone through so much and uh, to be a resilient uh, part of this country, it is so important that our voice be heard. So when I talk with people from different states that I may visit or live in, I remind them, first of all, as we talked earlier, I'm from Detroit. And that's a powerful statement in and of itself because sure. we are a strong people, we are a vibrant people, we are people who come from all different parts of the country, uh, from the Great Migration uh, back in the 60s and prior to that, to, uh, to now. And um, it is so important that we remember that and that we take that to the polls. In my professional life, I'm speaking to women all around Metro Detroit and indeed across the state. And one of the biggest motivators for, for women getting out this midterm is the Proposal 3, Reproductive Freedom for All. Um, we're worried about not only our own bodily autonomy, but we're worried about our children's, um, just them being able to choose when they grow or don't grow their families. Those have the economic impact and also social impact, and people should be able to make those decisions for themselves. And that's what I'm hearing from women all around Metro Detroit and when I'm speaking to women around the state, is that this is a huge, uh, a huge motivator for people getting out to vote. We see a lot of women who haven't been voting for a while coming back. We have women from both parties that are coming out saying that they believe in this so strongly that they, they're going to vote and they're talking to their friends and family about voting too. And that's something, as a grassroots activist, I see a huge change from 2018 even. Um, yes, we had female candidates that motivated people in 2018 at the top of the ticket in Michigan, but a lot of the um, motivating factors seem to be coming from Washington in 2018. I see that changing. Um, issues are local now. Well, I think we're in dangerous times. You know, I mean, when we take a look at what's actually on the ballot in, in 2022, um, I think that it's very important that everybody actually takes the time to express themselves. There are things that people will hold back on, but it's very important that we are talking to the people that I, you know, we talk to the people that we work with, we talk to the people that we live by. It's important that we talk to those who are making the decisions that impact our lives. You know, in the plant, it's even more of a microcosm of society in general. You know, we have the full gambit from you're very liberal Democrat, you're very conservative, and in some cases, election-denying QAnon people. Manufacturing is the backbone. My, my grandparents came up from Texas, 
um, for specifically for the General Motors jobs. I'm a third generation um, uh, employee and a third generation UAW member. So you know what as as the automotive industry goes, um, you know Michigan tends to go. And sometimes so does the country. So does the country. Martin, you have an interesting perspective here because you've been on the city council in in Troy. You were a state uh, representative here in Michigan. So you've been in politics, and and your tenure in politics started before politics felt like the swamp that it can feel like today. You were elected as a Republican, correct? I would still tilt towards the Republican Party, but since it's kind of been taken over by Donald Trump, I don't really like to affiliate with that sort of thing. And so um, the truth of the matter is I've always been of independent mind. And if you look at some of the things I've introduced when I was in the legislature, I took a more Washington Washingtonian approach to uh, politics. In other words, I'm not a big fan of political parties. In fact, I think that elected officials should be elected on a nonpartisan basis and, and stand for what they believe in, and the electorate should be able to evaluate them based on the individual. It's a real herd mentality right now. So you've got the, the you have the Democrat folks and you have the Republican folks, and they get elected and they go to Washington, and very few of them are going to stray from their herd, if you will, and stand for themselves because it's an incredibly difficult. It's an incredibly difficult road to walk if you go that way. And so as a young, young boy growing up in Michigan, I was really enthralled by the whole American concept of the marketplace of ideas. Mm -hmm. And that's really where I come to the political table in all of this. I truly believe that it doesn't have to be a zero-sum game. I win, you lose, you win, I lose. I think that we can all give a little and take a little. And that's really what the American dream is all about. Wayne, you come by it honestly. You are a Republican. What is your issue with Republicans right now? It's, it's the ones that, like what you were talking about earlier, the, the ones that are a little bit just too far out there. Uh, their, their belief system is not what I consider a consistent Republican. I come from the Jack Kemp School of Republicans, okay? So that's, this is a, it's a lot different now. I feel like by today's standards, he's uh, kind of a liberal. <laughs> yeah. I, I come a Republican. From the, but I, but he, I come from the school of working with Republicans, you know, Republicans and Democrats yeah. working together, together for the better good of their, the people they serve. And so if I don't hear that coming from a Republican, if, and if I know them personally, yep. that makes a difference. You come from Detroit. Mm -hmm. um, you heard Lolita talking about black Americans and having to feel... Uh, heard and have their voices heard and, and be engaged in the process. And you worry that that's not actually the case in Michigan, that, that, that black representation isn't as good as you'd like it to be. I mean, you can look at, you can see what's happened with through redistricting. Uh, state reps, all the black state reps that have lost their seats in, uh, in the primaries have lost them to Democrats who live in the suburbs. And it's not that they're bad people, but when you, when you know that people are not voting in the city and then you take all those votes and spread them out in the suburbs, you end up losing a lot of representation. And that's, to me, uh, a big problem which you're going to have with black voters is that none of the people that they know who support are on the ballot at this point. And there's no Donald Trump to drum up and get Democrats angry. So, uh, and then when you add Proposition 3 in there, there is a couple things in there that could be problematic for Democrats coming up.